we have Dave DeBear Maker, who Dave is an absolute expert at toy photography. He is like the king. Uh, there he is. Hey, Dave. Hello. How are you guys doing? Great. Thank you for joining us. So, Dave, we've got two people that sent in toy photography. Yeah. You would be the perfect guy to take a look at them and give us your honest opinions. And so I have them up on screen now. They're going to bring them up. And I'll go through them first, and then you can tell us. Here's the first one. Okay. And the next one. A little Toy Story reference there. And uh, looks like a Lego. Pretty cool. Okay, what do you think there, Dave? Generally, I kind of like what I'm seeing. It's hard to kind of get that real kind of cinematic look with toys, but I think they're pulling it off here. The racing car that I'm looking at right now, the wheel spin is fantastic. Right. Um, yeah. It looks very much like it was taken at a racetrack, other than the fact that there's obviously a Lego guy in the passenger seat. I actually don't have much to say about this one at all. I would, my proclivity would be to maybe darken the foreground just a smidge because it's a little bit distracting, like yeah. just a hair or vignette it. I'm a big fan of vignettes, but that's a personal style thing. It's not necessarily the right thing to do because if you put on a vignette or just darken the foreground and the background, it puts the brightest spot on the car itself, which is where your eye would naturally go to. So we're, we're almost there. Yeah, that helped. I just added a, it's quite a big vignette, but you can see before and after. Yeah, that vignette helped a lot. Well, it really kind of like makes it match the other photos that they have. Yeah. And the other photos have that very cinematic look, and vignettes are very cinematic as well. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. And then here's the second image. I like this a yeah. lot. It, it totally mm -hmm. brings the movie right to mind. I might just brighten up, uh, I'm not sure what you call that, doll thing. Um, <laughs> the spider doll. Um, just a smidge. Maybe give them just a touch of sharpening just to kind of make him focus, stand out just a little bit more, but wow. he's right there. Like it's, there's not a lot I would do to this image. Maybe crop in just a smidge. Um, I would try a crop without the light on the top just to see how it looks. Let's go to the crop tool and it would go like, well, you can see more of the photo here when I went to the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But let's, let's just bring it in like more like this-ish. That would get rid of that light in the corner. See, I liked it with the light. So this is this is more my style than it is, I think, actually required. But what I would want to do is probably introduce just a little bit of haze to this image mm. and, and have that the light coming from the top right there. Introduce like some sort of a spotlight effect that shows the light right. rays of the light onto them. I think that would really make that pop. But again, that's a personal style thing than it is a the right thing to do but generally speaking yeah. i really like this the light's in the exact right spot for that monster thingy figure thingy. um yeah. whatever that is that horrible thing and here's the third shot here's the third shot the lighting on this i really like obviously they're looking into the keyboard thing there uh, the light coming out of the keyboard is really nice i like the depth of field the characters in the background i think are uh, going out of focus just right. Yeah. Uh, it's This is a really nice shot. This is one of the questions when it comes to um, toy photography is how much of the natural toy do you leave in versus how much do you take out for the purposes of the shot? And the reason why I say that is on the guy with the hoodie, he has a little bit of a, a horizontal highlight just below his mouth on his cheek. My instinct is to use a clone stamp tool or... Uh, the uh, spot healing brush just to take out the highlight part. But I like a very clean looking Lego. I think it's realistic to how you'd actually sh look in real life. So that's that trade balance of what the person wants. So One thing talking I talking about that, that little highlight, thing, yeah, right? That there. Little, little highlight right, right there. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's technically wow, a, tough, Dave. the same. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, like yeah. a little one there too, but oh, yeah, 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 little yeah. one on uh, the other guy. There is, there is a fundamental mistake in this though. Um, his The uh, hoodie guy's wrist. It looks like the uh, hand is not pushed all the way into the arm. Oh. Which is a common, common problem. I do that frequently. You have to check every single joint every time you take a shot because they, they tend to uh, not stay tight. So that's the one thing I think that is I would absolutely change would be to make sure that his hand is fully pressed into that arm. All right. Let me uh, bring up the other one for you here. Okay. But thank you for those comments on that mm -hmm. one. Let me grab the other one here. It's Batman. Batman it's cooking in the kitchen. And Loki. Ah, good old Indy. Thoughts? Um, 
my first thought is that there seems to be a focusing issue. I don't know how much of that is because I'm watching it on Skype and Skype kind of brutalizes photos, but all three of them seem to have focusing issues. Like, especially uh, Loki here, his face is not yeah. in focus and I feel like it should be. I think you're right. Yeah. I, oh, I only noticed it on Loki, but let's just go, let me open up Loki here and see if, if a little uh, Topaz might fix that. Give it a sec. Yeah, it is not super sharp, is it? No, it's it looks very much like a uh, depth of field issue, which is common with toy photography because the uh, oh that looks much better. The uh, your depths of field are incredibly small because your lens gets so close to the figure that the depth of fields drop to zero, or not drop to zero, but drop just really small. I'm guessing uh, if the, this person was taking the shot again, I would look into the uh, uh, focus stacking technique to get both his head and his uh, the tesseract the. The glowy thing in the front, yeah. um, both of those in focus. I would probably use focus stacking to get yeah. both of those in focus. It, it looks better now. Yeah, it, the sharpen definitely helped. I wonder if you could just do this. I'm, I'm just going to throw this on here, Dave. I'm going to go to the high pass filter, and I'm going to uh, change this blend mode to hard light. Hide this, and then just paint in just his face. And I think that that'll probably finish it off there. Yeah. That would do it. Yeah, that's that's some. That's so it's just adding that little oomph yeah, in the sharpening. sharpening and like you, like Dave, like you're saying, it's just you're yeah, you're that right. macro yeah, that was, and that was you know. soft. And I think that can be saved. A couple of like a topaz and a high pass. And and what were your what was your thoughts on the Batman? Again, it looks slightly out of focus, but that, again, that might just be. Skype not being friendly to images. Yeah, I think what, what we're saying with all of these photos is adding some post sharpening. I yes. think there's just a level of sharpness that just isn't there. Yeah, and I I will say that for, if you look at any of my images, I always add a sharpening to the main subject of my photo is always extra sharpened in uh, usually Photoshop. I do all my editing in Photoshop, but just to give it that extra bit of oomph. Because when you're dealing with toys, because you're so close, all of the what looks like sharp edges are really rounded when you get really close so you lose the sharpness effect yeah um, so if you add it back in it kind of makes it look more realistic and last is indy here yeah and here same thing i would add some sharpness um this is clearly a recreation of the movie poster yeah. from uh, dial of destiny and like i said i've, I've created this before but i, I used uh, gandalf because i didn't have a decent indie photo and again, sharpening, adding some sharpening right around the face. If you look at that photo or that movie poster, it's incredibly gritty. Like it's got that sharp, everything is hyper, almost hyper sharpened. Uh, I would add a sharpening to it. The other thing here that I'm seeing while you're kind of adding the sharpening is this is another issue with toys in that uh, toys are made out of plastic and plastic has a different shine quality to it than normal skin does. Um, and you can see that on his face. His face looks clearly like it's plastic. Yeah. Right. And that's tricky to to combat. I actually, honestly, haven't really come up with a great way to fight that, except I tend to just use lighting to not make it as prominent, especially in his uh, his mustache, where the, right where the mustache kind of goes up to his nose. Um, there's some specular highlighting in there that probably wouldn't be there in a real person. So just dumbing that or dimming that down, I think, would help. Because uh, he looks, he basically, he looks like he's wet, like he just came out of the rain. Yeah, definitely some sweaty noise or something. Here, Dave, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. I went and added some noise, uh, some monochromatic Gaussian noise here. So, can you do it before and after? Yeah, I'm tr yeah. Let me let me set you up here. There's. Wait a minute. Let me get to. So here's before, basically, yep. and I have to go in a little tighter. And there's after. To my eye, that works. Because the other thing that it's adding is. Um, they're not really pores, but it kind of gives the pore texture. Yeah, yeah the space. that's what you need. Yeah. Yeah, it actually, it it's not bad. Right. A little bit of noise hides a lot of crimes. A so. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, Dave, thank you so much for taking the time Sweet. to join More us today welcome. and give your, your opinions on this stuff. It, it, uh, uh, that's, you have insights that Eric and I would never have. So <laughs> thank you very right. much, Dave. You're a good man. Thank you. Have a good one.